You, you see me okay? Yep, I see you perfectly. Really appreciate you being with me on the first uh, The Mo Show episode. And I think it's appropriate sure. given that uh, mm -hmm. as I went on to a new challenge or transition in my life as a teenager going into adulthood, you know, you helped usher in that opportunity coming to play for you at the University of South Carolina as a wide receiver. So I think it's really, really cool that we got an opportunity as I transitioned into another important portion of my life that we have in this first conversation. So thanks for being yeah, here. Yeah, I was uh, I was thinking back. Your years were uh, 06 through 09. Yes, sir. And, and then actually 10 through 13. The next four were the big years uh, that we had there during my time. But yeah. uh, we had winning seasons all the time that you were there. I guess we won the Liberty Bowl was a fun one. Yes, sir. Uh, beat Clemson there one of those years, I know. Uh, yeah. And then and then on 09 also. That's so right. We had some big wins, but uh, looking back, I was I, I was hoping that at some point we might could win one SEC out of those 10 years, but it didn't work out. But uh, we still had some big wins, good time, and, and hopefully memories of a lifetime for everybody on the team and all the fans also. You know, we won some big game beating Ole Miss in um, 09 mm -hmm. when there was number – Four team in the country and the, the birth of Sandstorm that happened, New Carolina. We got mm -hmm. that going that year as well. And it rolled into really the next year, seeing the, the, the benefits of that with Marcus Lattimore class coming in and you're doing as well as you did in 11-2, 11-2, 11-2. So I, I do have a question for you. How are you doing? How's Jerry doing um, during the current pandemic mm -hmm. in the country? And how are you spending your time for the most part? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing fine, Mo. Uh, fortunately, we have a, a place at Crescent Beach, which is straight across from Gainesville on the Atlantic Ocean. So we're actually here now, and then we go to Gainesville for three or four days back and forth. So I actually got a couple of places to change the boredom, maybe of one place or the other. Okay. Uh, but yeah, our, all of our family's doing well. We, we're practicing from the social distancing the very best we can. And uh, staying busy, working out every day. Got plenty of time to work out, don't we? Yes, so, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, but uh, yeah, all the family uh, is in good health, and uh, so we're we're very blessed. Uh, I think your thumb back up, Coach. Oh, I did. I did. <laughs> it's all good. I mean, it's all good. We're gonna make sure that we got it I good. Uh, holder, I need me a holder the next time for this. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. You always been a workout warrior. Uh, I remember distinctly as we played under you for the four years that you would mm -hmm. routinely get in the weight room four or five times a weekend and, and get it in. You always had your headband on, um, and you knew it was time mm -hmm. for Coach Furrier to go to work uh, in the weight room. So that's something that you always preach. You ask them your coaches, and I think that really highlights your leadership, um, the importance mm -hmm. of self-fitness along mm -hmm. with uh, mental fitness and all those things to make sure that you're in the best position to perform at your high school. Yeah, I always thought that was, well, first of all, important for the individual who loves mm -hmm. to, to work out, get a good sweat. And uh, it, it, somebody once told me, if you eat every day, you're supposed to work out every day. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I, I probably average five days a week with a good uh, workout. And uh, it's mainly the stationary bike now. Uh, okay. Even the treadmill had some back surgery two years ago. Uh, so I'm pretty much sitting on my on my rear end, pedaling as hard as I can for about 30 minutes, and that, that does give you a good workout. Obviously, you're being one of the winningest coaches of all time in college football and being successful pretty much at every level of football, including personally as a player, being a Heisman winner, bringing a national championship on a player level, and then as a coach, I think speaks highly to your winning. Can you dive into – your leadership style of creating a winning culture. My coaching career started at Duke University back in the early 80s. And uh, some friends of mine said, Steve, don't go coach at Duke. Nobody wins at Duke. You're going to get fired like everybody gets fired at Duke and your coaching career will be over. Uh, I was the offensive coordinator in the early 80s. And so my only chance to make it in the coaching profession is our players had to really play well, our offensive right. guys. Uh, Defensive players at Duke, they play their hearts out and play hard, but we, we very seldom send any defensive guys to the NFL, that's for sure. <laughs> so offensively, we had to stay on the field and we had to go score to have any chance to win the game. So I had to, I had to coach hard. And yeah. the biggest thing, though, that uh, I think that we had to do, I had to do as a coach, is convince our offensive players 
that they were good enough to beat the other guy. Right. And uh, one of the offensive linemen, he was sort of talking to the team before the North Carolina game. We, we allowed the seniors to talk. And he said, one thing I like about Coach Spurrier, he tells us we're just as good as the other guys. And if we play better than them Saturday, we can win this game. And yep. you got to believe you're good enough, right, Mo? Yeah. Yes, uh, right. You know, the Bible tells us all things are possible to those who believe. Right. It doesn't tell us you're gonna, it's going to happen. It's sure. possible, though. Right. So you got to believe and you got to work your tail off, but you, you got to believe we can beat these guys. Sure. So it all started at Duke. And, you know, I was fortunate enough after that to get the head job at Florida where the talent was, oh, you know, far superior. Mm -hmm. and, and we were able to make those runs right there. I had to just convince the Florida guys they were good enough to win the SEC championship, not just win games, but the, let's go for the championship. Mm -hmm. So that's where it all started at Duke University and uh, then at Florida and then, of course, later on in South Carolina. It's uh, great listening to you because, you know, I was one of your players and – Understand mm -hmm. how that philosophy did bake into how we felt every Saturday. I mm -hmm. often, pe often people ask me, you know, what it was like playing for you. And first off, I was telling you was the funniest guy in the room. Unless he was talking to you, then he wasn't quite as funny. And I think uh, a lot of my teammates would believe that. But outside of this debt, you always made us feel that we had an opportunity to win the game. And you was very practical about what was required and what we had to go do. And you wasn't a rah-rah guy. You was just, this is what we need to do. If we execute these plans and run these plays when we see these coverages and execute the defense and mm -hmm. be successful on special teams, then we're going to win this game. And it's not one game that I went into while we played that I didn't feel that we had an opportunity to win that game. And mm -hmm. I think that speaks exactly to the, the philosophy that you had for coaching and you still did us. <laughs> Everyone knows how – your great career at the University of South Carolina concluded. And you've been on record explaining that decision a little bit. I want to ask you, again, just what, what was the leadership thoughts that you was having in that, in that particular moment to make that tough of decision to say that, you know, I don't feel that I got my, my team's attention well enough that I'm going to give someone else an opportunity to lead these guys. Can you, can you touch on that a little bit? Well, just briefly, um, the really good years we had there, Marcus Lattimore, of course, was an inspirational player to the entire team. And then Connor Shaw, you didn't get a chance to play with those guys. I did, I did. But, uh, <laughs> Connor Shaw and even DJ Swearinger over there on mm -hmm. defense. And yeah. when you got guys on the team like that, this sort of, uh, you know, enthusiasm is contagious. And, hey, fellas, this ha here's how we do it now. And to us to win and be successful, we got to practice smart, get ready, prepare, play the entire game, and all those kind of things. So the coach can only do so much. And then, uh, and then it's the players sort of passed it down the leadership to the younger guys, and hopefully it keeps going. Uh, toward the end there, after Dylan Thompson left and uh, a lot of guys – it just seemed we were a little void on uh, maybe those real leader type guys to get it going. And then it just, uh, the mistakes I've made, uh, obviously our defense uh, in 2014-15 were the worst in school history. And I didn't do a good job. Of dele I did too much delegation and maybe should have made some changes that didn't happen. So it got to the point where uh, the defense was really struggling. And then offensively, we started struggling. And uh, right. my, my voice was not heard very much throughout the team. And that, that's why I left. It wasn't because we were two and four and this, that, and the other. But right. uh, it, was, it was as if nobody was listening to me. So it was, it was time for me to get out of there and see if uh, the next coach could turn it around. Yeah. Well, Coach, you know, that's very interesting to me to hear that because mm -hmm. I think that requires a certain amount of humbleness as a leader, particularly as someone has been successful as you, to recognize that situation mm -hmm. And then say, I'm going to remove the problem, which the problem I believe is to be me. So I think that speaks very highly of you and, and, and your ability to address that in the way that you did. Well, um, you know, it, well it, it didn't help. They only won one of the last six games, I guess, that year. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, they, it needed a, a re-energy from whoever. It needed a coaching change. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it was time for me to get out of there. But the other question I have for you, particularly given the time that we're in right now, dealing with this pandemic, 
Is there any thoughts that you can share with folks that they can use right now to get mm-hmm. some of the mental challenges that they have dealing with the pandemic to mm-hmm. keep pushing and finding solutions mm-hmm. to push out as best they can? Mm-hmm. We just got to keep following those guidelines, social distancing, of course. And, uh, and I think everyone's going to be wearing a mask out in public pretty soon, if not right now at most places. Uh, so we got to just keep doing those things. Mm-hmm. And, and we got to keep our spirit up, obviously, Mo. Uh, yeah. There's a saying, if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger. So hopefully when this pandemic is out of our country, uh, our country can come back stronger. And uh, we just, we, we got to keep our spirits up though. We got to, uh, and spirit and enthusiasm is contagious to the next guy. Right, so just right. encourage everybody to keep that good attitude. Attitude is everything as we know. Mm-hmm. And uh, all successful teams, the good attitudes all the way through it. And those that are losers, they got bad attitudes. As simple as that. That's so good. that's one thing I always admired about you, Mo. Your attitude was always good. You're fired up, ready to go every week. We had some tough losses, but we had to bounce back. You know, all right. we all we all have some losses in life, but uh, the thing to do is bounce back and get ready for the next one. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, you know that that mentality, keeping the fight going, and for sure, I appreciate you you you're saying that mm-hmm. about me. That's what you had to do. Like you only mm-hmm. can control the next play. I had that question come up, you know, about the pressures of running for office, and I was like, well, what's difficult is dropping a ball your freshman year at your Robert Stadium, which is 20 minutes from your hometown. That could have been the game winning catch, and then you have to go back and play the next play now. That's mm-hmm. pressure. That's a different type of pressure. But <laughs> to, your, to, to your point, you got to just refocus and get back on the field and understand that you cannot control what has happened in the past, even if that was 30 seconds ago mm-hmm. you played before, and continue to push forward and try to be the best you can on this play that's coming up. I definitely learned that from you. You was a perfectionist in every aspect. Like you said, your fitness, your, your mentality. I tell people all the time, you always gave us an opportunity. If you practice well, you show that you can actually get the things done that you was asking, you gave us an opportunity to play. And whether that was a walk-on quarterback to a walk-on lineman or safety, mm-hmm. if you show that you could play, that you, you could do it. And I, and I think those mentalities have really helped us as we move forward. We're going to wrap this thing up here soon. I just uh, want to say I've enjoyed uh, talking with you and uh, reminiscing a little bit about the South Carolina days. The yeah. good ones yeah. and, and a few of the bad ones, which is part of life, as we know. Yes, it's sir. always a little good and bad. But uh, good luck to you in your campaign. I'll be pulling for you. Well, I definitely appreciate that, Coach. And um, thank you for your time. And, again, thank you for being the first guest. So we'll keep it going okay. and try to put them positive energy and positive vibes mm-hmm. out there. And hopefully we get past this pandemic that we all facing. I'm going I'm to put that on my resume. The first guest of the Mo Brown Show. <laughs> yes, sir. That's pretty yes, good. Sir. All right. All right. All right. All right. Good right. Thanks. To you. Thanks, Coach. Right. I really Thank appreciate you. it. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Have a good one.